Lo que hace el mundo es la deconstrucción de terror. Nos puedes encontrar en YouTube, Instagram y Facebook con tus antifrones comp y... Uh, Empire. La película de hoy es... Director's Cut 2016. Very good. Director's Cut 2016. I knew everything you said right there because I am a multilingual appreciator of different cultures. Can you remember what I say before the episode? Every time. What do I say? No, I can't remember. Herbert Blount aspires to replace the real director of a movie and make it its own by make it his own by capturing the lead actress and inflicting as much horror upon her in his version. Directed by Adam Rifkin, written by Penn Jillette, starring Missy Pyle, Penn Jillette, and Harry Hamlin, and a whole bunch of other people. So, why did I pick Director's Cut 2016? Well, I'll answer know. that. So, uh, Why did you? <laughs> I am an on and off fan of Penn Jillette. Penn Jillette, obviously, the uh, one half of the... Why are you an off? What's the off period? Penn, sometimes, uh, I'll get into that, but he's part of Penn and Teller, and he has a really uh, good podcast, sometimes with some interesting... Um, guests. He has written some pretty good books, I believe. He's a mm -hmm. very staunch uh, um, what is it? Uh, ugh, atheist. There you go. And he has these... Oh, uh, yeah. He's a little obnoxious with yeah, it. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's... I wouldn't say a little. He's very obnoxious. I remember South Park, uh, the creator, you know, they made that episode, God Go, God Go, or wherever, whatever. Cartman goes into the future to try to get a Nintendo Wii. <laughs> that was Wii. a great episode, yeah. Yeah, they didn't and the mention whole point is, did they? No, well... I was, uh, you know, I was reading an interview about it, and they said what inspired the episode was how much of an asshole he was about the topic of atheism. That they wanted to like almost make fun of people like him yeah, by sure. having all these like staunch atheist groups. Yeah, sure, because he, um, he's one. Even of... though they probably are atheists too. Oh yeah, I'm but... sure of it. And they're also surprisingly they're Republican, which pissed a lot of people off. But I'm like, no, they're libertarian. Oh, I read in an interview recently that they said that they were Republican. So maybe they're just joking around, but who knows? Anyway, I mean, based on the way they uh, cover the 2016 elections, I don't think that they're a Trump Republican. So, so. Penn, <laughs> Penn Jillette being part of the duo of Penn and Teller, uh, Teller who also makes a cameo in this film, uh, we, we will say that we will be getting spoilers into this film, but um, I'm going to get in a little bit into Penn Jillette and why I'm on and off with him. But I got to say that just a spoiler free sort of 5 50 or 30 second review of this film um this is a film i didn't want to see years when I, when i heard it was uh, announced i was really mm -hmm. in the pen gillette mode like i had listened to both audiobooks of his one of them is called every day is an atheist holiday and the other one is god no and <laughs> um he also he's written another he wrote a a, a book called sock about a um, sock puppet that comes alive and then he recently lost a lot of weight and um he lost okay. 100 pounds he's very skinny he's almost strange looking now he's called presto how i made over 100 pounds disappear which i should be reading anyway uh he had <laughs> he had announced this that's not that funny he announced this book uh I mean, he announced this film uh, about 2014 or something he uh had it actually crowdfunded and it was a long okay. long campaign for it and i uh, the premise sounded really interesting that the film was Basically, yeah, it did say it was crowdfunded at the end. Yeah, yeah, and it was a very, uh, it was a very interesting premise that the whole film would basically be a director's cut. And if you watch certain films and you're very interested in seeing, you know, that sort of director's commentary, always David Fincher does great ones. And there's mm -hmm. uh, there's a fantastic one for the film, The Rules of Attraction, which is sort of a quasi sequel to American Psycho because it. Uh, I saw stars. that. I finally saw it's it. It's a great film. I, I like that it film. It is a, a great lot. film. I think it's one of my favorite films. Uh, that's a film that stars uh, Sean Bateman, who's Patrick Bateman's brother within the uh, universe of what's his name? Uh, Brett Easton Ellis' books. Anyway, so this film came out, and I was. I saw it, I believe, last year, uh, no or problem. even a little bit before that, and I was incredibly incredibly happy with how it came out it was it superseded even what i expected for it to I be i love i love how like realistically they depict it is, what an amateur crazy person would do just as i would say um i and it's i'm gonna give it to a, a weird comparison um mm -hmm. one of the most complicated um horror films that are found footage because this is definitely a found footage film uh, but a very yeah. good one but the only other found footage film i can compare this to is Noroi. Do you remember okay. Noroi with the silver? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Because Noroi uses many different sort of aspects of media 
to tell its story. So it'll use tele- mm-hmm. it'll use television shows. It'll use found footage camera, all that stuff. And I can almost say that this is sort of a black comedy version in the same vein of Neroy, that it uses every possible My medium. favorite was the... All right, um, well, gonna, I'm just saying, this is before the spoilers. So if you're just listening to the beginning of this and you want to get spoiled, really go watch the film because it really is a fantastic, um, very unique film in question. its own right. It's, it's very unique. Anyway, so now we're going to go spoil. Pen, do you think Penn Jillette named himself after the <coughs> razor? After the what? Oh, the razor? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe his mom was feeling funny about it. <laughs> or do you think the razor named itself after Penn Jillette? Well, true. So anyway, uh, why I was into Penn Jillette, at the time I had read those two books and I had heard, I was listening a little bit to his podcast. He has some very interesting um, guests on it. Like there's a guy named The Amazing Randy, who's like a staunch atheist. And okay. uh, I think, is that the guy that got caught? Wasn't it no. one of these atheist people that got caught like believing in God, ma- no. <laughs> masturbating or something mm-hmm. funny? Like, I don't know about that, but it was like a whole scandal and it was like really embarrassing for them. Oh, that still... was no, no, that was, I think, the amazing atheist. That was okay. that. Fat He's guy. like such a douchebag. Like, I watch a few of his <laughs> videos, like, such a douche. <laughs> his videos are funny. Unfortunately, I saw some of those clips. He's like this fat guy who's like obnoxious with glasses on. He has frizzy hair. And I guess it was like he the was, most embarrassing thing it possible. Is. I oh, what it oh is. yes, it is. Because what he was doing was he was um, he was sending videos to, I believe, a girl who was telling him to commit sex acts. And he was just he's just this fat guy who's like putting no, no problem with the fat guy part, but he's putting bananas up his asshole. Oh. <laughs> it's quite a sight, believe the me. Poor banana. Once you see the guy with a banana up his ass, he can't take anything he says seriously. But anyway, his first, the first intonation of the way he speaks uh, is enough to mean like not never. Yeah, and just you know, guys, as a note, don't send videos of yourself putting <laughs> bananas in your asses or anything like that. Pringles cans. This we uh, live in a social a media cumbers. world. Yeah, it's, yeah. Don't whatever you do is gonna be out there forever. Believe me. Anyway, so, um, anyway, no, but, so he has, Amazing Randy is this guy who debunks mysticism, he's a magician, he's a stage magician, Amazing Randy, he's about like, he's in his 80s, or I believe he's like his mid-90s, actually, he's this old guy, he looks like a wizard, remember that wizard that we saw at the Museum of Natural, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, the Museum of he looks like him, anyway, uh, so he's this older guy, and he, he has like a young Latin lover. There's a great documentary about him, and he he's a great guest on the show because he debunks bullshitters. And uh, what's that movie we saw about a guy that debunks bullshitters and has four short stories, and then at the end oh, you find ghost out that story. yeah, yeah, that was a, I didn't like that movie. Anyway, it's called An Honest Liar. So if you like James Randi, it's that guy. Anyway, so he's he's a frequent guest on that show because I think he is um, Penn Jillette's sort of mentor. And uh, anyway, oh, it's cool. great. And then also he has an episode with uh, with uh, Teller on it, and Teller talks and everything. It's great, you know cool. what I mean. But anyway, so I listen to that podcast. It's very it's very entertaining. He laughs at everything, especially his own jokes. And then mm-hmm. he also is very much like he'll be like, "Never smoked a cigarette in my life." Like he'll bring that up, and you're like, "Who the fuck asked you in the first place?" So it's like you get a little bit annoyed by stuff like that but he's still an entertaining guy and i obviously he's very talented because the i think i think he's a bit of an egomaniac i i maybe? would assume I, but i think he would he would say that do you know what i mean he's one of those guys that'll admit it he's not afraid yeah. to say that he's no better i mean that he's not better than anybody else or something like that i forgot what i'm just saying anyway so i would listen to that and I'd be like sometimes I'm like okay i had enough of him you know <laughs> i had enough of him for a while but at the yeah. time, I was basically at the height of me liking Penn Jillette and reading, listening to his audiobooks, which are very good audiobooks. Fascinating. Books. Fascinating And so backstory. I got to watch the movie, and I was very pleasantly surprised uh, by how it comes out. So the premise of the film is that what we are watching <laughs> is a completed film that has been hijacked by a miscreant... Uh, named Herbert Blount, and he's been talking mm-hmm. throughout the whole film, much like when you watch DVD extras on a film and you watch watching commentary as on film, and it's edited in a way that, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's putting in horrible green screen effects of himself. Although he's those those green screen effects are still very <laughs> impressive. Like when people are walking in front of him and he's badly green screen, they still. I just love like. You'll see her and him sitting on a bench, and you'll see them behind yeah. them with their arms <laughs> yes. popping out. So they'll, they'll, like 
his At character. One point, I think he CGI'd her over herself. Yeah, he does plenty of times. He does that a lot. That but, um, so stupid. He's he's obviously superimposing himself, but it's done completely like. Even though it's a comedy, it's a very it's like weird because this is a comedy, but it's still there are actually like parts where it's very creepy when he's like yeah. sp- sp- the um looking at her room, hotel room and shit like that. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's it's done straight, like it's do- it's totally done straight. There's, it's funny because of what happens in the film, but it's not like an outright comedy. Do you know what I mean? It's the comedy because he's talking. It's also I wouldn't call it an outright horror either. I mean, I don't even no. think there's a kill count in this. This is a this is a black comedy, and nobody dies. There's like no, film. there's like yeah, there's no. Only kill in, count. in within the film, a lot of characters get killed, but in the film, you know, yeah. in the actual film itself, nobody dies because Herbert's not really. And I love how like the act, the movie they're making in the movie is like you could see it being a real movie and oh, it would yeah. be one that we'd we'd watch it's and so we'd be cheese. like oh, yeah, it's, it's such stupid. a cheese like, film but it's done really well like it's, it's like actually... a like a rip off saw sort of thing <laughs> yeah, plus something. especially with the opening credits where you see people like getting murdered in horrible ways yeah all that shit like as soon as that's coming <laughs> i'm like uh oh what am i in for here and so the director see, like... <laughs> the director behind this is this guy named Adam Rifkin and he is like when I say he's, he's in, the director in the movie too. Yes, he's in. He's sort of a everyman director, and I've like known about him for the longest time because he's a writer and director. He's sort of one of those guys that are on the outliers of cinema, but he's still within it. Like he's constantly working. And yeah. I would have sworn that he has a million credits of films, but he has like only twenty four film directing credits. Um, and uh, his most, I think his the film that I remember first seeing. Is this movie called The Dark Backward, which is a movie you would fucking like? It is a weird fucking f- like it's very Lynchian, okay. and I'm sure he saw yeah. a Lynch film and made his own movie. It's with Judd. The Dark Backward. The Dark Backward, and it stars Judd, um, the guy from, uh, you Judd know, the, Pierce. Is that the guy from? No, not Judd Hirsch. The the guy from The Breakfast Judd Club. Hirsch? You know, the guy that wrist, uh, raises his arm at the end. I only seen that once. I I don't know. Uh, anyway, so Judd Judd Nelson, excuse me. And it's like a weird movie about this comedian who sucks, but then he starts growing a hand out of his back. And it's like weird. And then there's like a scene where like (laughs) they're watching a cartoon, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon on TV. It's very much like Mm -hmm. a Tom and Jerry, but like the cat actually catches the mouse and like graphically mutilates the mouse. It's really, it's a fucked up movie. It's dark, man. It's a really dark movie. Uh, I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. It's really depressing, but it's also... They just call it a satirical comedy. They don't get into art house But it's it's like Tim Burton and Lynch meet together. So it's that type of film. That's a good combination. It is. It's it's a very strange film. Uh, Without like the overly cartoonish sort of Tim Burton stuff, but the same vein. Same sort of film. Yeah. And also, he did this film called Look, which is a film about... The whole film is done with closed-circuit cameras. Mm. So you're watching a whole entire film just telling stories through multiple cameras, like hidden cameras and shit. So, and that thing I think is what uh, Pendulet says that's his favorite movie of all time. So that's oh, why cool. he. Uh, that's, so why that's why he got him to do this. Yeah. Adam Rifkin, and it makes sense because there's a lot of hidden cameras in this film. So we were like praising Pendulet, but obviously Adam Rifkin is at full force, I believe. No, this is a good direction. Yeah, this he is really he is at absolute full you know, per- 100% of directing mode here because there is a lot of factors in this film. It could have fucked up. Because, like, honestly, I would read that script and I wouldn't even know where to fucking go with it. Honestly, because there's a lot... Yeah. This is a lot of... This is a lot of factors. And half the movie. shit that they're doing in these things, you know, you gotta pretend there's dialogue. You know, they don't know what the narration's gonna be right. like over it. Because right. there's, like, so much narration as somebody's just walking and then it's like, Oh God! When it when he's like wording, like putting in the words for them as they're eating, <laughs> and it's freezing and it keeps and glitching. It keeps yeah. glitching and, <laughs> and like that's like, like how do you write that? You know, like that's like. So the film within the film is called not. <laughs> it's so stupid. The movie is called or knocked, knocked off, off or, and it's about this guy who off. commits like multiple murders. You know how dumb I was when they go, "Hey, Albert Fish, there was no DNA from." Then I was like, "Oh yeah, that would make sense that there's no DNA for fucking Albert Fish. It was like in the 1900s." Like, oh yeah, I get that now and um, right. would you did you see it coming that the uh, partner was going to be the serial killer uh, it seemed pretty predictable because that's like exactly like in saw with that guy hoffman or whatever yeah but i mean they do a good deal about with the they do the, they even do the great uh hollywood fake out where they place all the blame on the first cop on harry mm-hmm. hamlin's character which i thought was great 
Uh, Harry. I was thinking. I, I kind of thought it might be the. Uh, and I love how they say the lady from Insidious. I thought it might be her. <laughs> oh right, right. Um, and then the, they also the guy who had Quado coming out of his stomach. And they mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But a did lot you actually catch jokes. that Teller was the pervert guy? Yeah, Teller was great, man. He was great in this That was movie. like a great role right there. Oh, he was there. great, and he was all in on it. <laughs> and I think intentionally there's such a funny part at the end, because they show his con- like his rock band at the end, Penn Jillette. It's, mm-hmm. it's not very good music, but he's just rocking and rolling. And you see Penn... <laughs> You see Teller in the audience, and I know they had to pick specifically the shot of of Teller looking so like unimpressed by the music. It was hilarious because he knows the camera's not <laughs> I on didn't him. Catch it. It's I didn't so catch fucking it. funny. Um, but they had the guy who had Quato in his chest, and then there's a one of the lines that had me laugh so fucking hard. But it's like I think there's a lot of industry Hollywood jokes in this film, and the guy who plays the um, partner. In the film, I believe, what is his name? His Reed. Name, Reed. And he's played by the actor, oh, where the hell is this Hayes guy? Hayes MacArthur. Hayes MacArthur. <laughs> he mentions the movie um, Haunted House 2, which I think was a uh, film with Marlon Wayans. Because they were talking about, because there's a point where Missy Pyle disappears in the film, obviously she gets kidnapped. And then he mm-hmm. says, I was in Haunted House with her. If, if there was any movie she'd walk out on, it would be that one. And I, for some reason, I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing because people think that's like the worst movies. Like, those movies are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he really, the actor really was in that. Yeah, because they're all playing sort of weird versions of themselves. Like, Missy Powell's playing like a sort of a bitchy version of herself. And uh, yeah. it's just everybody's very funny. And Harry Hamlin's there with his real-life wife, um, Lisa Rinna, who's on an actual show called uh, Real Hollywood Housewives or Real Housewives. Of Hollywood, whatever the fuck that's called, and mm-hmm. obviously Harry Hamlin was in the really cool Clash of the Titans movie. Um, I never he, saw. It. He was. Really, it's really. It was great. It's like just. It's like sword and sandals, and they're fighting like clay, stop motion animation monsters and shit. You would actually like it. It's very cool. And then they remade okay. it with the guy from Avatar, and it was all like CG and everything just looked weird. But anyway, um, <laughs> so. Missy Pyle, who is the main object of affection of Herbert Blount's character, is an, is an actress who's basically, she's one of those, uh, you know how she they have... She was just in that horrible mom movie. Yes, yeah, she was, she that's the, what I was going to say. The trashy girl. In, in a really useless role. Like, I saw her in the film, and I was like, oh, there's Missy Pyle. I, honestly, like, I, w- I wouldn't have known Missy Pyle's name unless I had seen this film. Do you know what I mean? I've seen her in a few things. I know, I've seen I mean, her a lot. I just would she's, to me, like, you know how they say that guy? She's sort of a that yeah. girl. You know well, what I mean? Well, I think, uh, I think she might have been one of the stars of My Name is Earl. No, I think you're talking, uh, that's, I think that's, uh, the other girl. The girl from, um, uh, what the hell was that movie? Oh, boy, she was in, uh... The only movie that I think of is DOA, which is a, a weird video game film. But I know you're talking about. Let me see if she was in. She that, was in My Name Is Earl. Is she? But only in one episode. I guess it's a coincidence. Yeah, you're okay. probably mixing her up with the other blonde. She's there's a hot blonde in the lead of that. Um, okay. Anyway, but Missy Pyle is in is like in 172 film credits. She's in a lot of shit. So when I saw her in that um, Ma, it was such a mm. weird like one scene role for her it was very stupid even the way she gets killed in that movie was very stupid well she's just like this like bitchy girl that they yeah to yeah it was, with, it, she's whatever. she's uh she was in gone girl um she was in a lot of shit she's in a she's just in a lot of fucking movies she, and she's obviously very talented and just the way that um Penn Jillette is obsessed with her in the film his character Herbert, <laughs> is so it's very funny because like, i like i like when they do the one sh- i think that might be one of my favorite parts when they do the one shot scene and the guy's <laughs> going crazy and everything, shooting up the place and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and then he just fucking <laughs> walks off. It's like to the he's thing. hunting like, humans, and he just walks off. It's yeah. like so bad, it's like <laughs> <laughs> because like it's very like tasteless how they reenact the people's murders in the film, and the fact yeah. that he at the beginning of the film points out <laughs> through voiceover is like. He goes, I don't get it. Are these actors? Are these people supposed to be them for real? Like, he doesn't understand why the fuck... They, like, yeah, he's actually giving yeah. genuine sort of complaints throughout the film. Like, that doesn't make yeah. any sense in the movie. And then he explains, oh, they cheated the audience because, you know, Reed was the actual killer. So he wasn't there doing this stuff. Oh, guys, there's ice cream man near me. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, ice cream. That's the best. But Missy, what would you think about... What do you think about Missy Pyle's performance in this film? <laughs> she's great. <laughs> I like how she's like... In a constant state of terror, but you can tell she's like trying to like play along with him. Yeah, yeah. The, 
part where she, he puts in a, a, a fa- like a, a, a shower scene for some reason, but she's wearing a bra. And she's wearing the, fake the, boobs. The no, the nipples are drawn on the bra, and the vagina yeah, right, right, is right, bra- right. drawn on the underwear. It's very bizarre film. And then, and then like, there's a scene where they're like, I guess they're going to the beach, and like. The way it's CGI'd of them walking is yeah, like the most bizarre. He's like doing a like a jog, or they're both doing like a weird jog, like that fake. But it's so bizarre looking. <laughs> it's so funny. This movie is fucking hilarious. Like I had seen it two years ago, and I figured I'd be like, okay, I'll just you know, I'll just like wing it because I remember. No, it's really good. And then I saw it again, and I was like, damn, this movie was really good. Like this is a movie where you would tell other people to watch it but you wouldn't know what they're re- like I think this is a very specific taste this is like film. super like meta humor it, yeah it's very much a very unique style of humor uh, and this- I, I remember um, this is a little unrelated but uh, uh, it's like a Bill Murray movie where they go Life of Steve Zissou or, uh, oh right you know right, right 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 the, the, the deep, si- deep diving movie right yeah, and it's like and the guy who directed by Ten Bombs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took my mom and uncle to see it, and they did <laughs> God, not really? understand. <laughs> they did not understand the humor yeah, that is, at that all. Is a very, that is a. Very it's like a generational thing. thing. Like they did not even. No, I think that's just a peculiar funny. type of taste. Like I like uh, what is that director? I feel like it's a very much like our generation humor. Really, what is what is that director's name? I, I think that's more like hipster humor. Wes Craven. Wes, Wes Craven. Wes, Wes, Wes Anderson. Wes Craven uh, did that film. Um, he had uh, he had a uh, uh, Bill Murray come out of a, a fucking mirror with his. It was Wes Anderson, though, right? Knife gloves. Yeah, it was Wes Anderson. Um, I think that's like a very specific type of like meta humor and this. Yeah, I think this. I've only seen one Wes Anderson film, uh, but I, I do enjoy. Real Tenemans is really good. It is. That's the one that I saw. Uh, but it's yeah. like he that that motherfucker has uh, like talent like I, like I'm not oh, yeah. compelled to see the way his he films. like scr- uh, frame shots yeah yeah, yeah like amazing. every everything of his filming is like just a beautiful looking just very beautiful looking but I'm not like compelled to go see his other films even though I'm sure they're very good but I don't know that's, like that's on me I've always seen a few uh, but I like what I've seen but I liked so. about what I liked about this film is that what I liked about you is that. Rifkin is trying something different. He's a director that tries different things. You know what I mean? He's like, you can see that he's yeah. like, with this film, it's nothing like the other films that he's done before. And I wonder if that's sort of a bad thing for directors because, like, James Cameron, you know what he's going to come out with. You know what I mean? David Fincher, yeah. you know what type of film he's going to come out with. Uh, like, to us, he would, I guess, seem like an, a, a not as successful Takashi Miike, where he tries to do different genres and different films. And there's plenty of different directors that do different genres, but they always mm-hmm. have some sort of... Um, Takashi Miike has got, like, a style hallmark. Yes, right, 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 right. So he, he's able to sort of... You know that he's going to do something wacky in his movies, but it's done really yeah. well. And with this guy, um, I can't say that I've seen... Besides the Dark Backwards, because Dark Backwards sort of in tune with uh the tone a little bit mm. but it's very it's it's very dry humor um so I, I i it would be nice if more people saw this film do you know what i mean were, were there was there anything that you didn't like about the film not really i thought it was pretty solid actually I like, think it's a solid film yeah, and then also yeah. i was impressed honestly that it was the first time i saw it was even though it was a comedic, I do i wish there was a couple of kills Oh, like actually him killing people? Not like on purpose, but maybe oh, but like accidental sort of comedic death, like stupidity or something. Right. Like he tries to make a realistic uh, special effects scene and accidentally kills someone, right, or something right. like that. Like you know, I was impressed by uh, I'm honestly, even though he's not a very good actor, Gilbert Gottfried scene. Where oh he's yeah, like, he's playing it straight, and mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just funny to see Gilbert Gottfried in a movie. It was just very funny. Um, yeah, and then also, I like how he said, "Oh, this is Gilbert Gottfried from Problem Child 2. <laughs> Teller was great. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anybody else that I recognize. There, there's, there's some very recognizable actors in this film, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I can't like off the top of my head uh, think about it. Oh, there's, oh yeah, uh, like Brie Olson was in here. I guess she was one. Of, she was a porn star. She was very pretty. Uh, oh, and also I don't. I've never watched porn in my first life. First shot in so the film, just because I heard about it, not that I study this stuff meticulously. The first shot in the film, you know that lady who's walking into the precinct and her oh whole my butt God, is exposed. Is downpouring. I know, and the girl, the girl whose whole buttocks is exposed. 
That's, Wait, where is that? It's at the very beginning of the film when the cop is walking in this girl and he helps pull her skirt down. That's, oh, yeah, yeah. That's adult actress Sophie D. So if you can look her up and her great acting films, and that's good, too. Um, I, I would love to uh, I would love stars. to appreciate her acting. She's British, so, you know, it's, it's an extra. Um, okay. So, yeah, this film was full of, like, porn star and weirdo actors, but I, I think that's a positive thing. So I think there's not really negative thing to say about this film which is strange so just you could have used a little more a little more body you count. want an actual body count right there's enough, little... there's enough graphic violence in the film itself actually like, there's very graphic graphic violence in the film yeah but like you almost don't even you know care about real the film, so you're sort of like it's... oh right um, and like like it would have been cool if like he tried to set up a special effect and get the cop that came to visit him to be in the special effect right and then Killed like the to cop rewrite the film, with some actual kills and stuff like that. Yeah, but I think it's the fact that he's working on an already finished film, and he does, you know, and it is sort of like the film is a little bit airtight that it knows, like he knows where the film is. Like they didn't fuck up writing it. Do you know what I mean? Like he's mm. explaining. There's a scene where he's talking. I was, he's like, I can only eat potato chips here. He doesn't say where, but at the end we find out he's in prison, and then like uh, we see the scene where he how he gets the footage by stealing the the special oh, the password, uh, the password. Yeah. so there's little details put in the film so you're not like what the fuck is this because you know throughout the whole film i'm like how the fuck did he edit the film if you know the first time i saw it then i was like oh okay so that really it actually explains everything which is a fucking great thing and, and it from the the computer lounge right. in the and gillette <laughs> is gillette is funny in it like he's not a great actor but he's great in this like i think he's a f- very funny he's a very just a fucking actor. dopey creep yeah, it's just a, a, he. It's I would think it's hard to act bad in a film. Do you know what I mean? How like it's sort of hard to act bad in a movie. Like if you if you're yeah. a bad actor, you're just a bad actor. But to mm-hmm. act as a bad actor, I thought that's pretty good. Like the way he did it, and I'm maybe sure Rifkin had a hand in it because <laughs> there was this, there's like the scene that Pendulet always brings up on his podcast about saying the the single worst acting ever in film, uh-huh. and he did it. <laughs> what was it? It's a scene from I think the Lois and Clark the Superman show. You have to uh-huh. look at it on YouTube, but there's like a scene where he's like talking to Superman and just the delivery is so flat and horrible. Like he keeps saying it's the worst acting you've ever seen in anything and it's just funny to keep bringing <laughs> it up. But um I I like to say that I I give this film a fucking like a 9, man. This movie's great. I give it a yeah, a 9 out of 10. Oh, by the way, that sex scene. How great was that when he inserts himself in the sex scene with her? And his head is <laughs> floating everywhere. <laughs> I even like that first shot when he doesn't mention himself, and it's going around in a circle with the three cops, and you mm-hmm. see him in the background, and he keeps slowing down, even though he's not like introduced himself yet. It's like really fucking creepy. Anyway, I gave this movie a nine out of ten. Um, adding cartoon sound effects when Missy Pyle is picking the underwear out of her butt. <laughs> I give this. <laughs> It's such a I, funny movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. I give this um, a nine out of ten. Uh, nine out of ten. Uh, CGIing a or green screening a version of somebody over themselves shot in much better quality. Yeah, I think, uh, and it was weird because I was like, had a problem. Like, why did the guy just sort of let that cop go? And then it made sense why he did it because he wanted to get caught like Manson. So I thought, I was like, okay, I'm fine with that now. Um, so, listen, it's a rewatchable film. And it's very tough for a lot of movies it's to be very rewatchable. Funny. It's very rewatchable. Like, if you leave it alone for another year or so, you can watch it again and be like, oh, this is funny because there's stuff you won't pick up the first time. So, anyway, with that, Danny, what's the final word? Sewage implant. Deconstruction.